thank you very much for all those who have attended live. For those who haven't, you'll find there's a little bit of differences um, in the poll and the question answering, but of course you can ask me any questions that you want to offline. So let's get going. Here's a great quote for you from Albert Hubbard, who, um, if you don't know who that is, it's an American philosopher. He says that many people fail in life not for the lack of ability or brains or even courage, but simply because they have never organized their energies around a goal. Now, um, I can see here there's a few people who I know who are in the wellness industry who focus a lot around energy, but we are going to talk about where your energy goes. And you might have heard phrases like where energy goes and focus and energy flows, or you've heard on um, what you focus on is more on what you're going to get. Um, there's all these, these great quotes there, but if you put your energy into something, you're going to get more of it. And what that means is, if you're focusing on some of not having it, on the negative, so I don't want to have financial failure, or I don't want to have this anymore, that's where you're putting your energy. And it's actually going to give you more of what you're asking for. So, we need to be putting it out there that we want to put our energies and our focus and our positivity all into achieving something from a positive side of um, point of view. But let's go to this organize, and that's why you've come to me, how to organize that. How do you organize a goal? Well, let's look at a couple of things. First of all, the reasons why um, some people have challenges with goals, and um, raise your hand here if you um, agree that sometimes you've, you've hit these, some of these as a challenge milestone for you, is maybe you've not been very specific um, already when you've got a hand up there. Um, sometimes we say things like, um, I want to lose weight. That's great, but specifically how much? Uh, where do you want to lose it from? Uh, when do you want to lose? How much and by? How are you going to do that? There's all so many questions around that. So being really specific with a goal. Maybe people don't write it down. Um, New Year's Eve, pure example of when people set um, a goal, a resolution, and they shout it out to the world, I'm going to give up smoking, or no more chocolate for this year, or whatever it is that you've decided to do, but you're not writing it down and you're not uh, being accountable to yourself. I've got a couple of uh, writing, uh, writing down as a, obviously a challenge for you guys. You can see some hands going up there. A huge one is missing resources. They say that they want to do something, but then they find that they don't have the money, they don't have the time, they don't have the agility, the knowledge, the skills, the support, the technology, whatever it is that's needed. So they're not being very realistic with their goal. Another huge one, uh, this is something that um, is addressed quite a lot with my clients. There's no help and support. Setting a goal and getting very excited about it is great, but to maintain that, you need to have people around you who are lifting you up, constantly helping you, constantly motivating you, and supporting and help. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that they have to join you on the goal journey, but just being there is a good friend, and that's really super important, and not everyone has or has sought or seeked out that help and support. Um, they've not thought through the obstacles, sorry, a little bit of a spelling error there on the screen, but the, the um, obstacles aren't thought through, meaning that you're not expecting things to kind of fall at your path. Now, unfortunately, life isn't perfect, and you're going to have these hurdles to cross. Now, the beauty of hurdles is you can actually um, preempt them from happening or see that they're coming and have a plan for when they um, start to appear. So we'll have a look at that as well. And then finally, very, very clearly, no clear plan. So I'm going to do this, no idea how, and I'm just going to figure it out throughout the year. And they're the kind of people who get to October, November time, start to panic, I haven't achieved my goal. Um, it's a bit like uh, the spring, summer thing, we get to around about April and we start to panic that we might not fit in our bikini. Um, <laughs> if you want to fit in your bikini, you can't fit into it now, you've got to make a plan. You've got to look at what obstacles in your way. Get the help and support and the resources that you need, write it down and be specific on how you're going to do that. So let's look at why not everybody likes to set goals. Um, I ask the question every year in my business page there and to people I speak to, are you setting a New Year's Eve resolution? And there's actually about 60% of people who do and 40% turn around and say, no, I don't want to because I'll only fail at it and what's the point? Fear of failure is huge. Um, some people really believe that if they don't set a goal, they're actually protecting themselves from failure, if you can believe it. 
the whole um, method of what if I don't make it, what if I look foolish to people who um, I've said that I'm going to achieve this goal. Well, I'll just put all the hands down here. Raise your hands if ever you've heard this quote. What would you attempt to do if you knew you could not fail? Have you heard that quote before? Raise your hand. Yeah, I've got about 30% of you have heard this. What would you attempt to do if you knew that you could not fail? A few people are saying yes through the question box. Thank you. Appreciate that. I'm just going to open up the question box a bit bigger here so I can, uh, so I can see it a little bigger. So we are getting quite a few questions through already, which is awesome. And we've all just started. How wonderful. Okay. Sorry, guys. I see. Okay. Some of you are not seeing the slides. Let me see if this changes anything for you. Thank you very much, Jenny, for pointing that out. Okay. Raise your hands if you are indeed now seeing the slides. Wonderful. Thank you, Jenny, for pointing that out. A spelling mistake and I haven't clicked on the slides. <laughs> thank you, guys. Yes, I can see the slides. Wonderful. Yes, and thank you. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Let's go back to this fear of failure. So I ask you the question, have you heard the quote, what would you attempt to do if you could not fail? Well, the idea behind that is that you deserve to give yourself the courage to be and to do anything. And your well-being and Many people on this webinar will even tell you that moving forward is dependent on courage in your life, courage to change, courage to try. Uh, we're going to look at potential setbacks in your goals for potential failure um, because we need to be prepared for these. And what are you going to do if a threat's thrown your way? So it's okay to have that fear of failure. It's not okay not to try. The next one is uh, maybe uh, you're not ambitious enough. I actually had a, a friend say to me um, just a few weeks ago, I don't feel like I have the ambition like you do, uh, which I found very, very interesting because this particular person has gone through, through some major life changes purposefully and has made goals and they don't see themselves as being ambitious. But what really ambitious ambition is, is not limiting your thinking. Um, limited thinking can prevent you from progress in your life. We all know this. Um, I want to share a, a quick story I heard recently. It was in one of my um, child's little library books there, and it said, there was a fisherman who every time he caught a big fish, he would throw it back into the river, and he only kept the small ones. The person who was watching this uh, thought it was, you know, a bit of unusual behavior, and asked the fisherman why he was doing it. The fisherman replied, well, I have a small frying pan. The idea behind that is, is that most people no, don't make it in life because they're carrying that small frying pan. You're limiting yourself to what you can do. Um, and by recognizing that, it's going to prevent you from growing unless you recognize that potentially you have some limiting beliefs. But that's not something we're going to address on this particular web webinar. But look up limiting beliefs. It can, um, it can really prevent you from growing in life. And then the next one is um, having a negative attitude. There's some people out there who always see the pitfalls rather than the possibilities. Having a positive attitude is something that's well worth developing and strengthening. And we're going to look at the attitudinal um, side of goals just shortly here. So let's really look into the method um, now here. We'll just have some questions popping up. Let's make sure there's nothing uh, pertinent that we need to talk to you about now. No, there isn't. Wonderful. Let me bring down hands as well. Okay, SMART goals. SMART is an acronym for five elements of really setting a super clear goal, and they stand for specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-bound. Don't worry, this is going to flash up on the screen here again in just a few minutes, but if you are going to write anything down, uh, write down this, SMART, S-M-A-R-T, and write it down on the left-hand side of the page. One thing I can also tell you, if you're wanting to have uh, some of the things we're talking about, I have them in worksheets, of which I will direct you to um, afterwards. Well, SMART methodology is a simple tool that helps you to go beyond a really fuzzy, hazy goal to a super actionable plan. So what we're going to do is we're going to walk through a goal and really make it SMART. <coughs> now, excuse me, sorry, I'm suffering from a little bit of a cold here as well. <laughs> So let's have a think about uh, kind of the top goals that, that are out there. Now, I'm assuming that a lot of you, we actually have uh, 41 of you here on, on the call today. I'm assuming that a lot of you already have goals or you want to set a goal. So let's find out uh, what the category 
your goal is in. So if you want to um, click, it should be here on the screen. Is your goal a health goal? Financial? Is it career orientated? Or is it for business? Um, click on here. Wow, interesting. We have one that's absolutely top of the pops here. Uh, we have this career and business orientated right now. Let's have a look. 60% of you have voted. Can you take one of your biggest goals that you have right now? Is it health orientated, financial, career, or business? Where does it stand for you? All right. You have 85% of you have voted, so let me let me close the poll here. Let me share the answers. Well, 25% of you have a health goal, 25% financial, and 50% of you are for business, uh, which is really interesting. It just shows me the demographics of the people who are joining us here, and I can see there's another two people who have joined us here. I'm sorry, we have closed the poll now. We've just asked the question, what goal, what category is your biggest goal in right now? And 50% of you have business, 25% financial, and 25% uh, health, which is interesting. So what I decided to do, and knowing it's 50% business, we are going to, I'll, um, I will really uh, focus on that just a little bit here. Let me just move this out of the way so I can see what you're looking at. Okay, we're going to focus on a health one. And the reason why I'm, I'm utilizing this is this is the number one goal for January, is generally I want to lose weight. And I am currently running a Love Me Challenge of which a few people have reached out to me about their goals being the fact that they want to feel um, and look a little bit better than they do right now. So I'm focusing on this, but we will go on to business and a little bit of financial as well just to help the people here on the call. So let's work through a smart goal for I want to lose weight. Now, you know straight away here that it is not specific. Okay, what does want to lose weight mean? Now, a lot of people approach me, and I do um, one-hour sessions for goal settings for people over the phone, and they'll come up with a very generic goal like, I want to lose weight, I want to get out of debt, I want to open my own business, whatever it is. And it's very statement-orientated, which is great. Well, here's the definitive difference between a dream and a goal. A dream is something that may or may not happen unless you put energy into it. A goal is something that actually has a really actionable plan. You know exactly what you want to do. So if somebody comes to me, which often they do, and say, I want to lose weight, what do I need to do? I'm going to ask you a series of questions. The first one is, why? Why do you want to lose weight? Once you know your why, it's going to be a whole lot easier to achieve. What specifically, where specifically do you want to lose it? Okay. Do you actually want to lose weight or do you want to gain muscle? Do you want to be a bag of bones? Like, What are we talking about here? How much weight do you want to lose? When do you want to lose it by? How are you going to do it? Are you going to get a personal trainer? Do you have a great DVD that you've utilized? Are you going to have an accountability plan? Is there other people that can do it with you? What about your meal plan? And what one of two things happens at this point. People either get really frightened of all the questions I'm asking them or they start to think, I haven't made this goal really specific. So. Um, you know what, I'm, I'm going to introduce you something very, very quickly here before I move on here. Um, I uh, facilitated a program not so long ago about setting smart goals for a business and we started talking about um, health and wellness. And this one particular chap, he wasn't very old, he was around about 19 years old and he said, um, I, want to, uh, I want to gain some muscle. I said, that's awesome, let's work through it. And when we got to specific, um, I, I did a, a process on him called the five whys. I totally invite you guys to do this too, the five whys. And this is asking yourself why five times. It's really as, as simple as that. The chap that um, founded Toshiba made this an actual methodology. This is brought into the Six Sigma program, if you know anything about project management, but five whys. So I said to him, why do you want to gain muscle? He says, I want to be strong. Why do you want to be strong? Well, you know, I'm a guy and I want to feel strong. Why are you a guy who wants to feel strong? Because my girlfriend likes it when I'm strong. Why does your girlfriend like it when, I'm, when you're strong? Because she doesn't like it when I appear weak. And there's what happened. We got down to the final why about what he was doing and why he was doing it. Because when you can get down to that root why, you can specifically put things together. So I said, there you go. 
What you're wanting to do is build your relationship and build yourself emotionally. Are we now going to change how specific your goal is? And of course, he said yes. So let's help you do this. Let's get specific with this. So I put here, I want to lose weight specifically in my arms and stomach so I can fit into my favorite suit for my friend's wedding in May. I need to lose weight, so I'm going to try the blue beach diet, which, by the way, doesn't exist. This is totally fabricated. Uh, <laughs> and I'm going to do it by eating clean and exercising, walking, swimming, biking. Okay, well, that sounds like a great goal, and it's certainly better than I want to lose weight. But we're still not there yet. In fact, we're not even a fifth of the way there. <clears throat> the more specific you are with the goal, the more focused you're going to be, and the more likely you want to achieve it. And like I said, there's other questions we can ask yourself. But let's go here. If you cannot measure a goal, you cannot manage it. If you can't measure it, you can't manage it. Who's heard that before? Raise your hand if you've heard. You can't measure it, you can't manage it. Yeah, you probably heard that in the workplace. It's true. If you can't measure something, you can't actually accomplish it. Quite simply, measurement is a way of monitoring your progress. You need to know how close you are or how far away you are from your goal achievement. So let's ask the question of, of why this person wants to lose weight and we'll say here type that in um, I need to lose 40 pounds by May awesome well here's what happens and this happens a lot um, have you ever bought uh, in fact I'm gonna pull all your hands down here raise your hand if this has ever happened to you you're pretty hungry there's two of you and you think well it's only an extra two or three dollars for an extra large pizza let's go for it you've got the pizza then you start eating it and then it seems far too big to possibly finish and you know that you're going to be having cold pizza for breakfast raise your hand has that ever happened to you <laughs> okay I can see I've got a couple of pizza fans here I personally I love cold pizza but anyway I'm losing weight pizza is not the way to go what happens is, if you have this huge pizza and then you've got this massive, massive goal, you say, oh, gosh, I need to lose 40 pounds by May. That's really overwhelming. And 40 pounds can be a lot of weight to lose um, by May, but we're able to measure it. So let's ask ourselves the next question here. Is it attainable? Well, attainable means that it should be out of reach enough to be challenging, but it shouldn't be out of sight. So like I say, looking at 40 pounds by May is like looking at the, the huge extra large pizza that you want to eat. You've got to break it down into small, small more digestible pieces so that you know that you can measure success on smaller milestones, and more importantly, you can celebrate those successes. So I put here, I will lose 15 pounds per month by eating healthier, and exercising five times a week. Okay, I know I can give five times a week. They say 30 minutes for a couple of times a week is perfect. That's going to help you lose 40 pounds. But here's the question Is that really realistic? If I was to take my diary out now and say, right, five times a week I'm going to exercise for 30 minutes, it's not 30 minutes. You've got your preparation time before the 30 minutes of exercising, the time afterwards, showering, finding your outfit, getting to and from the place where you're exercising, or even if it's downstairs in your basement, exercising to a great DVD, you've got all the cleanup. So essentially, you've got at least an hour, an hour and a half every day for five days. Is that realistic? So I'm going to say to myself, no, it's not. Um, it really, really isn't. Not with my schedule. So I'm going to break that down and say, actually, here's what I want to do. I don't necessarily want to lose the weight. I want to lose the inches because I want to click into my favorite suit here. So I'm going to lose three inches and a minimum of 10 pounds per month leading up to the wedding. And I'm going to do that by going to the gym three times a week. Awesome. And then, like I said, afterwards, we're going to do a, a time. When am I going to start? When am I going to check in? And when do I want this to be done by? Well, by May. So I'll go by the 1st of May. I want to lose this amount of weight this amount of inches, and I'm going to start on the 14th of February. So let me show you here on the screen. Dream versus a goal. Your dream is you want to lose weight. Your goal is I want to lose 40 pounds by May and 12 inches so I can fit into the suit to wear at my friend's wedding by using, using the Blue Beach. Again, it's fabricated, healthy eating diet and exercising at the gym three times a week. Is that or is that not more a bit more compelling than having it, I want to lose weight? I want to lose weight is the big extra large pizza. 
the goal of losing 40 pounds by May and 12 inches as more digestible pieces are much more likely to be succeeded. And now I know exactly why. So that's the five whys, which went down to, I want to fit into the suit to wear at my uh, friend's wedding. I know exactly why. Show you another example here. Somebody mentioned uh, financial. Okay, we've got a couple of questions here. Let me just double check that they're not something that we need to address right now. Oh, somebody's saying that um, that they have indeed had uh, losing weight um, as a goal, which is awesome. Congratulations for you. They've said that they're doing yoga for kids after school with their four-year-old and using YouTube, which is not exactly their choice, but they're feeling a difference. That's awesome. I'm really happy that you're doing that. Um, every little bit helps, right? I'm not necessarily sure that five times a week uh, would be motivating for me, but that's, <laughs> that's not for everybody. Um, thank you there for your questions. Okay, anytime you have a question, please shoot them through. If it's relevant, I'll bring it up here. Um, so here's another one. Uh, somebody says they don't want to worry about their financial situation. Comes up a lot in my coaching sessions. So we got specific with them. What specifically they wanted to do was to become debt-free and generate enough passive income from their computer business to free up time um, by following a cash system. If you haven't heard of a, a cash system, um, that's very simply with taking out your budget in cash and divvying it out. Here's what we have for food, for gas, entertainment, etc. Uh, so that's so I said that's great. That's much better about saying I don't want to worry because when you focus on what you don't want, you're going to get more of what you don't want. You're going to focus on the positives. The positive is they're going to be debt free, generate enough passive income. So I said, well, when? How do you know that you've done that? Apart from being debt free, generating a dollar income, does that mean that you've achieved it? A bit like losing weight. I want to lose weight. You lose a pound. Does that mean that you've achieved your goal? Measurable, they said within five years they wanted to be debt free. I said, awesome. What do you want to be netting in, in passive income? They said, I don't know. So well, let's let's have a look at something that's within your reach. A thousand dollars by next year. I said, that's awesome. That's great. What about all your debts by next year? Not a chance. So what is attainable? What's within your reach but still challenging? Credit card debts. Awesome. So let me ask the question then, what if you're going to be uh, sorry, if you're going to be realistic, then what is it? And that's the credit card debts. Realistically, they couldn't get rid of all the debts within one year, but they could get rid of all the credit card debts. Great, great milestone to tick off. So we had then timely by January the first of next year, they wanted to be netting four thousand dollars in passive monthly income and have a zero balance owing on their credit card simply by doing a cash system. Simply asking those questions, you've gone from I don't want to worry about my financial situation written down as a goal to here's what I'm going to do. By January the 1st, 2018, I'm going to be netting in $4,000 in passive monthly income and I have a zero balance owing on my credit card by following a cash system. Now, this seems to be all good and well and very statement driven. Obviously, when we're sitting down on a, on a bigger scale, we would sit down and do one or all. There's different step by steps that we can do. Now, let me introduce you to something else. Here's one of the most important parts. Has anyone seen this before? This is called a SWOT analysis. Click on your, um, I've got a couple of raised hands here. Raise your hand if you've seen this before. It's called a SWOT analysis, and it looks a bit scary and daunting, but it really is not. SWOT analysis can be your absolute new best friend. Um, you've, you've heard that knowledge is power, right? This method is a great tool that can help you in making a really detailed plan. So taking your SMART goals and then peeling back another onion layer, if you like, to find out exactly what you need to do. It's called a SWOT analysis. It's going to help you look at your life and identify specific areas where you need to improve. More importantly, it's going to identify your strengths that you can capitalize on and grab those opportunities with this goal and overcome any potential threats. Um, overall, it's going to help you make that judgment call. I have another question coming through here. Um, threats, yes, don't panic. We're not talking about threats to your uh, to your, to your health. Uh, we're looking at threats to your goals. If you wanted to lose weight, what are the threats that are going to stop you from potentially achieving that goal? So uh, don't panic. We're not looking at anything from a safety point of view there. Um, it's widely used in business and with personally successful people. If you look at people who um, are, are big in the financial world, they use a SWOT analysis. Big businesses do a risk analysis, which is essentially the same thing, on any 
um, any goal. If you look up Apple and you put in SWOT analysis, they actually have uh, their SWOT analysis uh, on Google. They can have a look and see what exactly it was. So let's do this for the losing weight question. Uh, let me open this up here. So we have what are your strengths, weaknesses, your opportunities, and your threats. Threats. If you look at having, oops, if you look at having strengths, you've got to think what are your abilities your skills, your talents, this specific area. Uh, what resources do you need that support this strength? Who can that you ask for help? What characteristics do you have that are strengths in this area for this specific goal? So if we look at the, um, the losing weight one, strengths here. They've got a wonderful suit that looks great, awesome. So they're not just trying to lose weight to get into something they don't really like. They said that they had the characteristics of really great determination. And they actually had friends who wanted to lose weight and go to the gym together, which is huge. Now, some people love to work out alone, and other people like to work out completely separately, but that's okay. They also felt that they could enlist the help of family and friends using social media. I asked them what their weaknesses were, and they said that they love chocolate. Now, uh, raise your hands here if you are also a chocolate fiend. I, too, uh, I love chocolate. Um, okay, there's a couple of you there who are also chocolate fiends. You've got to find a sugar substitute ahead of time. So knowing this is a weakness, stay away from chocolate. Get it out of the house. Don't be. Don't go to a chocolate party. Don't go to a party where you know there's going to be lots of chocolate. Stay away from that part of the store that has the chocolate crying at you. What are you going to do? If you eat chocolate a lot of the, a lot of the time, I said, are you going to find a sugar substitute? Um, I myself, and I'll share this with you, and if you want the recipe, I'll send it to you. Um, I have such a sweet tooth. I really, really do. And I eradicated sugar personally from uh, my tea. You know, I'm British, I drink quite a bit of tea. Um, but you know, I have sugar everywhere else, and I found it really hard. And I actually had a sugar hangover um, once I, I had too much sugar. We've all had that you know, after Halloween. But I had sugar withdrawals, which was just awful. So when I found myself uh, wanting to do some weight management, which some of us do from time to time, um, I reached out to a friend of mine who eats very, very clean, very, very healthy, and I said, hey, what do you do as a sugar substitute? I don't want to know about sweeteners and things like that. She says, I make chickpea blondies. I'm like, ooh, I'm not a massive fan of chickpeas, but I'll try them. Oh my gosh, they were delicious. You would never know it wasn't cake. My kids eat this. They think it's cake. There is nothing unhealthy in them. Look it up, chickpea blondies. But joking aside, if you find that that's going to be a weakness of yours, eradicate it before you even start the goal, knowing that you're going to need a sugar substitute. Maybe that's using honey in, in your tea or coffee instead of sugar. You've got to find it. We decided that they needed to eradicate all the unhealthy food from the house and that not to go into the break room or ask people to put the chocolate somewhere else, knowing that that was a weakness. Then they looked at the opportunities. Well, the opportunities were that they were thinking about joining a gym. Um, it was great for socialization. They felt that they weren't being very social. They were busy with their computer business, so that was great opportunity. It was an opportunity to um, hit the consignment stores for nicer workout wear to feel good. And I say consignment stores because uh, more often than not, people go out and spend hundreds and hundreds on new workout gear, and they'll lose the weight. And their workout gear does not look so great. So uh, hit the consignment stores. You can get some great deals there. And uh, an opportunity to enlist more accountability, actually sharing it with family and friends on, on social media. What actual threats were coming up here were that there was lots of birthday parties coming up with cake involved, so they really had to find out what am I going to do when that comes up. So they decided that they would take their own sugar substitute, uh, so they didn't feel left out, or would even mention to um, the person having the party that you know won't be eating cake, so don't be offended if you don't eat a great cake. Um, trying to get, eradicate the sugar from the break room. There was a wedding rehearsal dinner coming up, so they had to make sure that. Um, that they were prepared for that, and they also had a birthday upcoming, so um, we talked about potentially um, going somewhere where it served, served healthy food instead of um, your big fat chocolate cake, which uh, we all know we love. Uh, I say chocolate, I know it's not a love of everybody, but it is. But here's the point. When you have a goal, you've got to look at their strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats and decide what are they. When you know your strengths, you can capitalize more on them. When you know your weaknesses and your threats, you can make plans for what am I going to do if that happens? What am I going to do if I'm going to go to my friend Sally's house and she decides to have a fondue party with big cheese? What am I going to do? Prepare yourself mentally and physically sometimes for your goals. And what opportunities are there to learn more, to gain more, to be better 
of this goal to get yourself to a certain stage that you want to get on to. So that's your SWOT analysis. Very, very helpful. You've got to think about your outside and your inside influences. They're really, really important. And they can actually challenge your success. How it's going to affect you and, and what level of these threats are and what can you do to reduce the identified threats. All businesses do it. Uh, a, a lot of the, the big, really important, very profitable people, they do it too. Take a goal, make it smart, um, you could do a SWOT analysis on it, and I'll tell you now for nothing, this will take your goal a step forward two, three, four times bigger than it will have done before. So, like I said, if you want a copy of uh, the goal setting worksheets to download for a SWOT analysis and SMART, you can very simply go to howtoorganizethat.com and click on productivity. Uh, also, I'd like to share with you very quickly, um, I always offer a free gift at the end of my webinar, so uh, for anyone that watches it, watch this webinar for now or in the future. I'm offering you a discount on my one-to-one -one goal setting sessions. It's just an hour and we work through your goals and we make it super smart, compelling and we do a full risk analysis with SWOT together to make sure that your goals are soaring. Simply mention that you've attended this webinar and go to howtoorganizethat.com for more details. So let's do a quick check-in now uh, for any questions that have come through. This is your opportunity now. Um, if you have any questions, to please go ahead and ask them. <clears throat> what if in between time, um, thank you, sir. What if in between time I don't feel uh, motivated to um, achieve my goal? Let me put my webcam on here so I can really be talking to you. I am back here. Uh, the question was, what if I don't feel really motivated to achieve my goal? Well, um, my honest opinion is here is you need to, if you're not feeling excited and motivated, you've got to go back to your why. Why are you doing this? So let's say uh, yours was the losing weight, for example. I'm not saying that it is. What if it, it is losing weight or being more healthy and your original why was to fit into the suit and now you're not motivated? Well, maybe, maybe it's okay not to have to lose weight. Maybe you, maybe you stop the goal and that's okay. That is not failure. Setting a goal means that you're moving yourself forward. You're taking charge of your life and, uh, and enhancing it. So that's okay too. The other thing is too is um, maybe go back and have a look at your threats. Maybe one of your threats is yourself and your own positive or negative mindset. Uh, maybe you need some a little bit of motivation or maybe it's just energy. Uh, someone mentioned to me a few days ago about um, the moons and the fact that it's dark and there's lots of things drawing out our energy at the moment. So if you're feeling disheartened, maybe you need to recheck your goal and it's okay. Goals can be uh, recreated and enhanced, lowered and increased, whatever they need to do at the time. I hope that answers your question here. Um, when I'm not feeling motivated to do my yoga, I have to take a step back and realize it's not just for me. Uh, yeah, again, uh, thank you for that. Um, Marcy, that comes down to really knowing uh, why you're doing it. Um, no, so I've got a question here, Michelle, thank you. Um, it says, uh, do all goals have to be on a large scale? Not at all. Um, when setting a goal, it can be something as simple as, uh, let's think about this. Um, so let's take the health one as an example. Actually, let's take the business. 50% of you wanted business. And um, it's like writing, I want to start my own business. Take it like a pizza, chop it all up, and start. So your goal can be quite simply right now, I want to open a business. And I'm going to find out what that business is. And I'm going to start making the plan. So you do your smart goals around making the plan and figuring out what that business is. Then to figure out the business, you work through all the, how are you going to know when you have a business ready to go? How are you going to know when you have a great idea? And start the steps with that. And then you can go on to starting the business, having exposure, getting your products together. And all of these can be very, very small little, go I say small, they're actually kind of big projects when it comes to business, but they can all be very, very small, manageable chunks, like the small slices of pizza. They don't all have to be really big. But on the other side of the coin, you can have a really, really big goal as well. And you can chop that all down. Um, you can um, take it as all one big goal and then chop them all into manageable pieces at the time. So gain one at a time, have a milestone. I'm going to be happy when I hit $100 in sale, $200 in sale, $1,000 in sale, when it hits Christmas. Manageable pieces. You want to make sure, to the point earlier on about being motivated, you've got to make it uh, easy to digest here. Any other questions coming through? Thank you. Jennifer's just written there. Thank you. This has been really helpful. 
uh, yes, I can repeat the website. It's howtoorganisethat.com. You go to services and productivity. Uh, you'll find underneath uh, the one-to-one -one coaching, it will say uh, smart goals and uh, SWOT analysis. Very simply download those. You can do them yourself um, or you can give me a call or email me. It's Ella at how to organize that. Uh, there's a contact sheet there on how to organize uh, that.com. Um, how do you get hold of a business plan? That's a really great question. There's a lot out there. Um, you can Google mindtools.com is a great um, resource for business. Um, if you're wanting to make a plan yourself, sometimes it's easier to kind of get, they call it the post-it note effect, and get it out there and kind of put all your steps for your own business. And then it depends. If you're doing it for a bank purposes or you're doing it from a purposes of you want to have your own plan, a step-by-step -step of what you want to do, you can reach out there to um, some experts or Google it. Google blank business plan and answer the questions. How will I find my customers? How will I retain them? What did last year look like? Um, there is a lot of tools out there on Google. And of course, there's uh, productivity coaches like myself. And there's also business coaches out there, everyone that help. Uh, yes, there is going to be other webinars on productivity. Uh, not just yet, and I'm not advertising them during this one, but there will be. Uh, for those attending the Love Me uh, month during the month here, February, um, unless you watched and it recorded after February. Um, there is other webinars. We have a webinar on uh, standing in your truth from the lovely Amanda Perone, who's a holistic coach. She's fabulous. We also have the Reverend Michelle Scrooge brown uh, doing one on um, uh, the law of oneness, which is really interesting. If you haven't looked that up before, I do a quick Google on it, the law of oneness. Pretty awesome. But there are three webinars for this month. There's no other questions. Uh, thank you. There's a lot of thank yous coming through. I appreciate your time. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much to, um, for attending. Um, please go to howtoorganisethat.com. Have a look for the worksheets there. I wish you very much luck in setting your goals. Make them exciting. Make them compelling. Uh, make them successful. And I hope to see you here um, at another time, guys. Thank you very much. Let me lock down my webcam here. And I'll leave the uh, email address on the screen for you for just a few minutes. There is a little survey. I would love to hear what you think. Uh, until next time, guys, have a wonderful rest of your day.